Want to know how to create a cinematic look in DaVinci Resolve? Check this out! Hi, this is Alex from Massive, the fastest way to deliver your large media files online. When you sign up with Massive today, we'll give you 100 GB free to send all your files anywhere you want. I'll leave you the link in the description box below. Go check it out. Okay, let's talk about cinematic looks. What makes a cinematic color great? What makes this film look that everybody is talking about? A lot of people relate it with the grainy texture from film, with teal tonalities that are very common in action films, and with a crispy sharp shot that has texture. I would define it as a technically balanced, pleasing to the eye shot that evokes emotions and contributes to the character and story development. Anyways, let's go into the Vinci Resolve. I'm going to show you some of my workflow for a cinematic color grading. I'm going to show you a vibrant look and then a more moody one. Okay, here in the Vinci Resolve, first let's go to our project settings and make sure the timeline is in the right color space. We're going to leave it at Rex 709 Gamma 2.4. Now, let's create some knots. I'll add three more knots to begin with. You can press Option S for Mac or Alt S in Windows. We're going to label them as well. The first one will be CC for color correction. The second one CG1, color grade one. The third one CG2. On this fourth one, I'll press Option P for Mac or Alt P for Windows to make a parallel note. Top one will name it skin and the bottom one will name it background. All right, I'm going to add three more knots and that's it. One will be FX1, the second one FX2, and the last one CS for color space. I know there's a lot of knots. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to, or you can add more as well if that's what you prefer. I just like to treat them as layers and have each adjustment separately. In the last note, we will add a color space transform from the effects library. Here, you can choose the color space and gamma from your footage. In this case, I shot this with my Sony, so I'll put the Sony Cine and S-Log3. There you go. Let's begin with the color correction. Select the dropper for white balance. His t-shirt will work. Yeah, that looks more balanced with more green added. Look at this. The shot is also a bit darker, so I'll raise the gamma and gain. Sweet. The point is to make it as neutral as possible, and this looks pretty neutral to me. These tones will adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights, but in a more general way. They will affect at the end the whole image lighting and color. All right, in the next note, let's go to curves. We're going to do the lighting. Let's make a little curve to get that contrast. Yes, like that. Now let's go to the HDR. In these three dots, let's select as well the color space of our footage. This will help the tools treat our shot better. I'm just going to raise the shadows a bit and lower the highlights so I can get more detail in the background. With these tools in HDR, they will help us to modify shadows, midtones, and highlights as well, but this time in more detail. They're going to focus only on a specific lighting and color range from the shot. Okay, back to my primaries. I will lower the offset and a little bit of my gain again. Let's add a notch of contrast here, and I think that is okay for the lighting. Remember, we're going for a vibrant look this time, and don't forget to check your scopes so there's no clipping. On the next note, we will change the colors. I'll start by lowering the saturation a bit. It's too much for me at the moment. Perfect. Let's go back to HDR and we will add a teal color to the light wheel. Just a little bit. You can see that it modifies the background mostly because it's what it's more illuminated in the shot. Let's also raise the saturation of this one to get the blues from the water to pop a little bit more. I like it. We will go to the next knot, skin. With this dropper, select the skin of your subject. Press Shift H so we can see what is selected. Adjust the parameters so you just have the skin tone selected. This will depend a lot on your own footage, actually. Okay, perfect. Make sure you have opened the vector scope to check the info of the skin tones. Click on the settings from it to show the skin tone indicator. Your colors have to fall in this line. Let's click on Window to get the circular mask and isolate the face just for now. Adjust the offset color wheel so it is right at this line. Let's check. Yes, much better. It was too red before. It needed that little bit of green in there. I'm also going to reduce more the saturation as it's still a little bit too much for me. Yeah, that is nicer. To finish it, let's go to the blur tab. I will increase the radius just a little bit to soften the skin. 
Alrighty, on the bottom node for background, let's select the water with the dropper. And again, we'll adjust it to just isolate the water. Okay, for this part, I want to make it pop more. So we will raise the saturation and color boost a bit. Lower the shadows, and from the lift color wheel, I'll add more teal. On the gain wheel, I'll just add a touch of yellow for the highlights. There you go. Let's go to HDR. We will increase the mid-tone details so the water looks more powerful. Super. Next note is for effects. In this one, I will also increase the mid-tone details here. And we'll go back to the Blur tab to sharpen the image by lowering the bar in radius here. If you have the full version of DaVinci, check out from the Effects tab the film grain to get that texture in your shot if you want to. I'm not going to add it this time. What I'm going to do is add an effects light, the glow. This one will affect the highlights of the shot. I'm just going to adjust to add a subtle glow on the water wave. Yeah, something minimal. We don't want it too much. Okay, now for the last knot, I will go to window and make a circle mask. We're going to make this like a vignette. This will help to get the focus on my subject. Click on this icon so we can invert the mask. We want to modify the borders of the shot and leave the face intact. The borders are going to be darkened and the middle part of the face is going to keep the color gradient that we did. Pull the circles out so you can feather the edges and it is more like a gradual change from the color grade that we did to the darkened edges from the vignette. Okay, now I will lower the gamma and offset, but again, just a little bit. We still want it to look natural. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. For final adjustments, I'll go back to the color grade notes and adjust the lighting and color a little bit more. Remember, it's all in the details, so modify as much as you want until you are happy with it. As I said before, this is more like a chill, vibrant kind of look, but we can also make a more moody one. To get this one, we're going to play with the dark tones and shadows, we're going to lower those highlights, and we're going to desaturate the shot. We're also going to add that teal color, combining the blues and greens in the shadows and midtones. Inside DaVinci, there's also multiple LUTs that you can combine with your color grading to make a unique and impactful look. You can get a totally different feel from before, making it more like a suspicious environment. I don't trust something good is going to happen to this guy now. When you finish your video, use Massive to send it for reviews or final deliveries to anyone, anywhere in the world. This is the fastest and most secure way to deliver all your raw and high-res footage when you're trying to meet your deadlines. Remember to click in the description box below to get your 100 gigabytes free from Massive. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want more filmmaking tricks, please click that like and subscribe button and toggle the little bell icon. I'll leave you here with this video for you to enjoy. We'll see you next time. Bye!